Under the NHL's new expanded 24-team playoff format, the Montreal Canadiens just sneak in with an even 500 winning percentage at the time the NHL went on pause back on March the 12th. If they are given the green light to resume play, they will face the Pittsburgh Penguins in a first-round play-in series. So we figured it was fitting to be joined now by Eric Angles of Sportsnet.ca from Montreal and Colby Armstrong from Pittsburgh. Colby, we'll start with you. I mean, you played with Carey Price in Montreal, and you know that Penguins team really well. When you first think of a potential matchup between these two teams, what comes to mind? Well, I think what everyone is talking about is Carey Price. And I think the first thing that comes to mind is just a ton of question marks as well. Like, um, you know, it's unprecedented what we're going to see. I guess it's like the start of the season, but they're going right into, uh, you know, this tournament format so and playoff format. So it's it's wild. It's it's wild. And I, I, I just I, I just don't know where you would, you know, put the advantage early. And you could look up and down the Penguins lineup at the moves they made, um, you know, the possibility of getting uh, injured uh, Jake Gensel back off a of sh- shoulder surgery. Um, but then you have to look at the rust factor, guys working out at their homes, time on the ice, camps, and does it all click when it comes back? So I think there's just a ton of question marks in both these teams facing each other. Um, but I do like that it is five games, and it kind of gives uh, both teams a chance to, you know, really get their wheels turning because it'll, it'll be a little bit rusty off the start. Yeah, I'd imagine personally, you know, just a departure from what Colby just said, where we're all looking back. We're looking at where we were when we paused the season, and I think it's normal and natural, and it's a factor when you're trying to evaluate what's going to happen here. But I almost think of it as, like, you're going to be off for four to five months. It's like a brand-new season, and whatever the psychology was in the moment, especially for a team like the Canadians that was kind of dwindling, playing out the string, kind of like old Yeller staring down the, you know, the, the barrel of a long rifle, uh, just getting ready to be put out to pasture and have to face all those questions about another playoff miss. You know, what they feel about their teams in, in retrospect, like I've spoken to a bunch of them since quarantine began, and, and most of them feel, you know, they're a much better team than their record indicated. They know that if they get on the same page that they can be good. They know that when they were healthy at the beginning of the season, which was basically the only time they were healthy, they had a, you know, a, a solid winning record to start the season and guys were playing really well. Uh, ben Chirot was one guy who mentioned, you know, losing Byron and Drouet early in the season was a huge factor. And yes, they should have been able to overcome those injuries. But the Canadians who are all about speed, losing two speedy forwards up front for three months at a time really affected the way they wanted to play. I think everybody will we'll approach this situation re- with renewed optimism. And the one thing that does carry over for the Canadians is they'll, they'll have this stigma around them that they are a huge underdog playing with no pressure on them. But they could be a completely different team than the one we saw when we stopped playing. Well, injury-wise currently, though, Eric, how can this extra time perhaps benefit the Canadians roster in that way? Well, I'm thinking about Shea Weber. You know, we heard about a career-ending, possible career-threatening injury that he had to his ankle as, after everything he's been through with his ankle and his knee over the last year and a half and, and the fact that he has had so many health issues since 2016. Um, and I remember talking to him as he was playing through that injury and said, you know, like, are you anywhere near 100%? He said no and, and, and roughly said that, you know, what it took for it, you wouldn't believe what it took for him to get ready for games and play Meanwhile, he was getting on the ice and he just looked remarkable during that time. So the fact that he'd be healed up would be huge. But, you know, I look at Jonathan Drouin, particularly I mentioned him, you know, he started off the the season on fire and proving that he had kind of taken his game to another level and, you know, had to come back from a a torn tendon wrist surgery that kept him out three months The you know, a week into coming back, he sprained his ankle. He's playing with both injuries or the lingering fear regarding that injury as you're recovering and coming back mentally just wasn't able and physically able to do what he was doing at the beginning of the year a long break probably benefited him more than anybody else but you know more than the physical stuff is the psychological stuff the the getting away from the day-to-day grind in Montreal and being able to put things in perspective and take a real good look at evaluation of who you are as a team and I think the Canadians to a man believe they're much better than what their record indicated. And Kyle, I would say, I would say that's, I would say that's pretty dangerous, I think. And I think that's why a lot of teams have a lot of excitement about the possibility about what, you know, this sets up to get some life and um, kind of the mentality part that Eric was alluding to about how teams feel that they've got a shot. And 
I think everybody's on a real even playing field. <laughs> you know, they're doing Instagram dog squats in their, in their houses or in their apartments. Um, and, you know, for them to come back and kind of get a kick at the can is huge. I feel the same way you mentioned, you know, even for the Penguins, Crosby missing a significant amount of time due to injury this year. Um, and then Gensel going out just before he got back, their team had some ups and downs. They were goaltending was, uh, you know, Matt Murray early, then Tristan Jari. Then they both were kind of flip-flopping, win one, lose one, each other back and forth. And that was kind of the team as it tailed into the pause and all while adding a Patrick Marlowe, a Tristan, uh, or a Connor Sherry, um, a Zucker, uh, and how are these lines all going to shape up uh, now with getting Jake Gensel back uh, likely for this playoff kick here? So, you know, I think there's a lot of possibilities with the way teams could look, should look. Um, but the, I think the X factor could be just that hunger and that mentality feeling that, you know, some of these underdog teams, they get an extra kick at the can um, and come and can kind of write a little bit of the stuff, as Eric mentioned, looking back and kind of write it moving forward into this. Yeah, Shea Weber was crushing the Peloton scores over the quarantine period, Eric, you're writing in your column. So I don't know how much weight that'll carry when teams eventually start to play again. But it's funny, you know, because, I mean, initially when you think about the experience and, and the factor that that would play after an 82-game season and going into the playoffs, you'd think advantage Pittsburgh. But in a matchup like this, after everything we just talked about here, guys, about what the pause and the amount of time in between playing, the, uh, the surface, the surroundings that it will create, I mean, where does the advantage lie in your mind, Colby? Well, I think, I think with a five-game series, when we look at it, I think it gives a big advantage to Pittsburgh one. Um, if they do get a scare, an opportunity to kind of uh, fight their way out of it, a chance for a lot of their, you know, skilled guys and players to, um, you know, find that feel. And if you matched up down Montreal's lineup comparatively to Pittsburgh's, uh, I think everyone would give Pittsburgh the advantage. Um, the one X factor seems to be, and everyone's talking about, is Carey Price, and that's why I think that five-game series number is so key uh, just for the Penguins to, you know, find themselves comfortable in that playoff, you know, situation again. And, you know, once that blood gets going, and I know if you've been able to see, I know Eric wrote a nice article on being around Pittsburgh and watching them practice and seeing the way their leaders kind of conduct themselves and pull everyone into the fight. I think that those five games gives them an opportunity to, to be able to give themselves a chance to do that if they have to. You know, that was one of the coolest things about this season for me personally was being around the Penguins for kind of a 24-hour cycle and, and having a, the opportunity to be with them on a practice day before a game and, and see the way they go through what they go through. And, you know, I don't think it's any type of coincidence that they were able to overcome, you know, long stints of injury to key guys on their team, not just, you know, Gensel and Crosby. Malkin missed some time at one point. Uh, you know, Latang. they're, they're – there's always seems to be an issue there. And yet they always seem to believe they have this mentality that they have built in becoming a championship caliber team and winning championships that their belief, no matter who's in the lineup is that they're going to win and no matter who they're playing. And that, that goes a long way. You know, I go back, uh, you know, to 2010, the last time these two teams played each other in a similar type of situation where Montreal was a huge underdog uh, after knocking off the Washington Capitals in 2010 and riding Yaroslav Halak's coattails. Uh, to the conference finals. And what really stands out to me about that series and the biggest reason in my mind that the Canadians won it is because the Penguins were arrogant about the way they were playing. They had won, you know, they had gone to the Stanley Cup finals one year and won it the next year. They were the, the defending champs and they never felt like they needed to change the way they played to adapt to what Montreal was doing in that series. There was a certain arrogance level that was there. I don't think they would take it for granted this time around. I think those guys have been through those experiences. I think they would say, you know, we're going to have to make sure that we, we, we command the game out there, but we're going to have to make adjustments if they throw this at us and that. And, you know, to Colby's point about Gary Price, I think it's very much one thing that does help Montreal is that people would be so focused on Price and saying, oh, you know, that it's, it's, it's really only about him. I think the Canadians will take that as an extra motivation. And you look at guys like Weber, Gallagher, Max Domi has never played in the playoffs before. You know, you could say whatever you want about him, his inconsistency over his five-year NHL career. You give that guy a chance to play in the playoffs, he's going to make a difference. I strongly believe that. So I, I think the competitiveness of the Canadians and the health of their room, the way they are with each other and the group that they have, 
you know, they would really embrace that underdog role. And, and there's no question they are the underdog, like Colby said. Kyle, I have a question for you. What do you think of the matchup between these two teams? Because you're one guy that, you know, is not in either one of these markets right now. You've been around both teams quite a bit in your role with Hockey Night in Canada. How do you think they match up against each other just from a technical aspect? Well, I think just from everything you guys have mentioned, it'll be fascinating one way or another because in terms of where the season was at and how much that matters when they start playing, we don't know. But where the season was at when it was paused, I mean, this was looking at to be the greatest underdog-type matchup because of where the Penguins were and where the Canadians were back on, on March the 12th. I just think, I mean, for, for years now, it seemed like any time you would go to do a Penguins game, one of their key guys was out. Was it Malkin, Sherry, Crosby, Gensel, Latang? It seemed like injury issues have, have always plagued them. Matt Murray at times, too, has dealt with the injury bug, too. Um, so to be in a situation here now where everyone has had a chance to get healthy, it's a fresh slate for them. Um, for me, it would be really difficult to, to bet against Pittsburgh in a, in a best of five. Anything else you guys like to add? I'm wondering what Crosby's up to. We haven't heard much from him. I feel like Colby's been texting him on the on the down low, trying to get trying to get into his training regimen. Colby, you got any news for us? What, <laughs> what do you think of all this? I, I, I the, but it sounds to me like he's staying pretty ready. That's what I get from him, and I, I, I guess I'm not surprised knowing him that he's doing that. But um, no, he seems pretty ready. He seems pretty busy on the phone a lot. He's saying, and then trying to coordinate with what's what's going to happen. I think. You know, that's probably been the hardest thing throughout through all this is these players are, you know, they've been pretty much through a summer training program of having to stay stay ready and finding ways to stay active and, and complete a lot of their workouts that they're getting sent to them. So it's been difficult, but they have been busy. Um, and I think the big thing through it all, I think even with Sid, probably other guys as well, is the question mark of whether they're going to get to get back to playing and they're, you know, busting their butt. Uh, like it's midsummer to get ready for a season that may not have happened. So some light is at the end of the tunnel for these guys right now. Um, and I know a lot of them you know, likely said more than anyone probably dying just to get back in his most comfortable place. And that's back in a hockey rink. Well, my last thought is there's a lot of controversy around this idea. And that for me makes it a good idea. The fact that there's people complaining about it. There's people that love it. There's people that are like me that are saying, let's go. I want the most chaotic thing possible here. Uh, <laughs> it means people are talking about it. And I think the National Hockey League needs that. Um, they need it from a revenue perspective, but they need it just in terms of the game and what it offers all of us at times like this. And these are difficult times for everybody. I hope everybody is, you know, as healthy as possible and making the best of what's a very difficult and challenging situation. And I think hockey is going to make it better for all of us. And I, for one, who would never be watching hockey in July and August, would be thrilled to be doing it, especially in a playoff type format, and especially including some of the teams that are out there that could really upset the apple cart, including the guys behind me over here in the Canadians jersey. So I think it's it's going to be a blast, and I really hope it comes to fruition. Terrific. Eric, on that note, uh, Commissioner Gary Bettman last month told Ron McLean, we don't live in a world of perfect anymore. Indeed, perfection is overrated. The drama, the uncertainty, that's where the fun is at. Gentlemen, thanks for this.